Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to demo the advanced data validation test script in SQL Server. Now that the first eight videos walk you through writing many different types of data validation tests, the next step is to run them all in an organized way. This advanced implementation runs each test case and outputs to a table, what you see now on screen. Notice the additional data elements in these results versus the prior video's simple script. The additional elements include the test execution time, very handy if you're trying to troubleshoot a performance issue with your test case run. The expected results, in this case, it's just a header, but there, if, if there's a failure, you'll get the expected results and the actual results and the specific rejection details all listed out for the failure. Very handy for troubleshooting. And you even get the uh, lookup SQL that's cut off here. Let's get started by opening the usage instructions out on GitHub. First, open up a browser and set the URL to github.com slash data research labs, all one word. From there, browse to the SQL scripts project link folder there or here. Click either one. Then scroll down until you see the data validation scripts. You can read that if you want. Click the link. And from here, we're going to scroll down to SQL Server. And you can view all these on your own, but the advanced validation script is what we're interested in for this video. So click that link, and here we go. Here are all the instructions on how to use the advanced data validation scripts. And we're going to go through all these different steps, one through five, and the next steps. Okay, so step one, if you haven't already in downloaded and installed uh, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, also known as SSMS, then go ahead and expand this link, and you can uh, follow these two instructions and click the link right here. I'll do it in another window so you can see. And you just go to the Microsoft site and you just follow the instructions. You download it, install. Next up is step two, downloading and deploying the demo data that the script uses. And so expand that. And you basically, I'll just right click the first link here, pop it open in a new tab. You're gonna to go to GitHub's raw. You can do that, control A, control C to copy all the data paste it into text file, or you can go out to GitHub and download the three files. But what you're going to do is download the Create Database SQL script, run that. And then you're going to download and run the Create Tables script that generates, I don't know, half a dozen tables or a dozen tables, empty. And then the third script populates all those tables with the demo data that we're going to use. So running these three scripts will get you all set up. And when you're done, it would look something like this, a demo HR database with all of these tables here populated. And if I were to right click and select top thousand for say from employees, there's all the demo data. It's all fictitious, none of this data is real. Next up on the instruction list is step number three to download and configure the advanced test cases script. Expand that, you can right click and download the script. We'll walk through what the script does, but Control A, Control C to copy it, or you can go into GitHub and download it. And then paste a copy of that script somewhere local on your machine. And it mentions here that line 69 and 70. Let's go back and look at those. So 69 to 70 should be the configuration, and there they are. They've actually changed a little bit. They've moved to 73 to 74. And uh, what we want to do is say, are we sure we want the number of days to look back to be 100? Okay, leave it. If we only want to look back 10 days or 5 days, change the value. And same with the maximum number of rows returned. So if there's an error, you don't want to return a thousand rows and blow up your uh, output. Maybe you only want the first five failures or the first two or three. That's what this configuration is all about. Next up is step four, walk through and review the advanced test script. So expand this. Yeah, the script is currently 3,700 lines of SQL. So it's three times bigger than the basic script. And there's reasons for that. Uh, you can read through these, but I'm going to actually move it to the side and walk through visually for you. So lines 1 through 55 are the comment block header containing notes and definitions of what's going on, rule sets and all that. Lines 56 through 77 now. Yep. Uh, well, actually, that's incorrect. 56 to 60 point to the right to... Uh, database to use. And then 61 through 77 are the configuration settings. Uh, name value pairs, in attempt table, 
two different rows inserted, one for number of days to look back and two for the max number of rows. And these properties are looked up and referenced throughout the cases below, so you don't have to search and replace and have something hard-coded. You just have your script variables right up here at the top. And then line 78 all the way down to 36, 39, right about there. That is all the test case logic. So here's test 66, the last one. We'll walk through what those look like later in a bit more detail. But that's all the test cases. And lines 3640 here to 3655, this block is just going back through all the executed test cases in the temp table of test results. And it's calculating the execution time, which is handy when you're trying to speed up your test cases. So it has the start times, but it needs to go back and calculate execution times. And this final block of code is just about putting out the output in a pretty report. We'll see what that looks like in a minute, too. Uh, actually, we can look at the output right now. So there's a typical data validation test. looks something like that. This is test case 31, checking for uh, carriage returns and line feeds and indicating where the failure occurs in the line, you know, character 15 or whatever. And then there's a whole bunch of boilerplate code behind that in this script. And all this boilerplate code configures the output, basically. So every test case has its what you've seen in the prior videos, kind of a simpler SQL that's specific to each test case. And then there's boilerplate code where you copy and paste from the uh, beginning here to the end there, and you just paste that onto the end. And I'll let you read through all these details that really get into it about how each test case is written up and broken down in the advanced script. Next up, step number five, executing the advanced data validation script. Let's expand it and we'll walk through this first. The steps to execute the script, you open SQL Management Studio, you open the script, and be sure, I don't have it highlighted here, but be sure you're using the grid output display not the text output display like we did with the basic script because you want all the results to come out in a nice pretty grid down here. So once the script is ready, configured, click execute, and you get all your results listed out down here. Now in this example, let's zoom in a bit here. I guess that's all the more I can zoom in. In this example, test case number four failed, took three one thousandths of a second to execute. But the nice thing we get here is the rejection code, the table Countries count in the past 100 days, well, well, I'd have to expand it and I could see the rest of the rejection detail. And it expected more than 55 rows, but the actual count was 25. And it gives me the lookup SQL too that I can copy, paste, and execute in a different uh, SQL editor window if I want to verify the results myself or look up further details. So that is the power of this script. When you get a fail, it makes troubleshooting really easy. Giving you the execution time, well, not so important. That's for performance tuning but giving you the rejection details, the expected results, and the actual results, and the lookup SQL. Very handy. And if you want to see how all of that works, in the prior step, step four, down below, it walks through in great detail all the boilerplate syntax in the SQL and how it all works and how the lookup SQL works, actual results, etc. So you can read through how to configure your own test cases so that you get the nice handy output results here. And just to demo it, here's SQL Server Management Studio. Here's the script. It's set to output to grid. I'm going to hit execute. It's going to run for a little bit, and boom, it's done. And if I go look at my output, make it a little bit wider. There's all my test cases all the way through 66. Description of what the test case is. Execution time, they're all just thousands or hundreds of a second. They all run quick because there's not much data. Start time, there's no rejection details because they all passed. And there's no expected results. They're all headers. If there's a failure, then you get an expected result, actual result, and lookup SQL. But that's how it runs. Thank you for watching. And please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.